The message you're about to listen to is a message from Apostle Eric Nyamiche, the chairman of the Church of Pentecost. Apostle Eric Nyamiche preaches the gospel in its simplest form to help the believers walk in Christ and also how the believer relate with his world. This year, the message is on unleashing the church to possess nation. Join us and let's learn from Apostle Eric Nyamiche and be a blessing to the world. If you are new to this page, make sure that you subscribe to the channel and turn on that notification bell so that when new videos are uploaded, you can have access to it. Make sure you go to our own page and check out for more videos. Thank you. What makes the bride bride is what the bride is wearing. Otherwise, we know this lady already. She's a member of this church. But on that day, something different is on her. That makes her the bride. Standing out amongst all of us. I don't think that on, on a wedding day, any of us will go and wear a long gown like a bride and come and stand here. You wouldn't do that because you are not the focus. If you do that, the thicknesses will throw you away. I'm telling you. They will ask you, why? Why? Do you want to compete with the bride? So you don't do that. The bride is a focus and the bride is being prepared. And the Bible says that the garment that the bride was wearing in the revelation that John saw is what? Or was what? The righteous ass of the saints. So when you are not doing things right or when you are not righteous, when you are not living the kind of holy life, when the church is not concerned about the spots and wrinkles, we are disqualifying our members from being part of the wedding ceremony. So when you are hiding and you are doing anything evil, don't think that you are deceiving the presiding elder because you are smart. These days, you don't need to get pregnant for people to suspend you. Do you need to do that? Before the secure and the injections, do you need to? Huh? When you get pregnant, even your fellow ladies will tell you, ah, I used to pay. So, you can continue to do that. But let me tell you for a fact, you will miss that day. Because the garment that the bride is going to wear is a righteous ass of the saints. And listen to me carefully. Anytime that you do anything wrong or good or you do something in the secret, there are two people who are aware. Can you tell me who and who? <laughs> you see, maybe your mother didn't see it. Uh, your dad is not aware. Your pastor is not aware. Your boss is not aware that you are forging figures. And that the money that you are supposed to take to the bank, you are, you are diverting it. He is not aware. Even you can do whatever. And even the president will not be aware that you are the minister who is causing us all these problems. But who and who are aware? Yeah. Just lift up your hands and then mention one of them. Yes. Huh? Your very self, but take yourself out. Because you are hiding, so you are out. Apart from you, who and who are aware? Uh, oh, lift up your hands and say it, if you are sure. Yes, my brother. The devil. Do we agree? Then who else? You see, it is these two people who, who, who matter in our judgment. And so you are not safe. You can, the secure can secure you, but you are not safe. Shall we bow down our heads and then pray that if there is anything that we are hiding, let us repent of them. Because the day will reveal it. And you may be ashamed because the devil is the accuser. He will accuse you before God. Let us pray that God have mercy. It's not just about sexual immorality. It is about anger. It is about theft and stealing. It is about uh, being loggerheads with some friend. It is about harboring bitterness in your heart. Shall we just pray that God have mercy and forgive us? Let us pray that our lives will be plain before him. Shall we rise for a moment as we pray? Shall we rise for a moment? And then please pray. Be serious about this. Talk about that and move out. Find a way to move out. Tell God to help you to move out. 
what you do with your husband, the anger, the quarrels, anything that you do that has not pleased him, the day will reveal it. Doesn't matter whether we know it or not. Shall we pray? Please pray. Got my mind made up, and I won't turn back, cause I want to see my Jesus someday. I've got my mind made up, and I won't turn back, because I want to see my Jesus. taking this morning will be a solid one because the church has a goal what is the need for coming today to give us money tithes and you are not living rightly what is the aim why should you do that if at the end of the day you don't want to go to heaven it is better you leave Christianity so that when you go to hell you know that you work very hard to go to hell yeah, you don't have to go to hell and you are making arguments. So I'm, I was a member of Dr. Wyatt. No. So please, let us live right. And it's not a burden to live right. It is a joy to live like Jesus. Revelation 21. I read verse 1 and 2. And then verse 9. Then I saw a new heaven and a new earth. You see, ultimately, there will be a new heaven and what? A new earth. For the first heaven and the first earth had passed away, and there was no longer any sea. Can you imagine in a country without sea? There is going to be a day that there will be no sea. Verse 2. I saw what? The holy city, the new Jerusalem, coming down out of heaven from God. This is the one that Jesus said, I'm going to prepare. It will land from heaven like that. Prepared as a hot, a bride, beautifully dressed for her husband. He's saying that that city is even as beautiful as a bride. But it is not a bride, but it is prepared for the bridegroom. Verse 9. One of the seven angels who had the seven bowls full of the seven last plagues came and said to me, Come, I will show you the bride, the wife of the Lamb. That is Jesus Christ. I will show you the bride. And then when you continue to read, when you go home, just read Revelation 21. Find time and read the whole chapter. You see the description of the bride. But when the chapter was ending, this is what the Bible said. The last verse in Revelation 21, verse 27, please. 27. And I want us to read together. Ready, go. Nothing impure will ever enter it, 
Nor will any man who does what is shameful or deceitful, but only those whose names are written in the Lamb's book of life. That is the criterion. When that city is finished and well prepared for the bride, he says that nothing impure will enter the city. Nothing shameful will enter the city. Except those who have sanctified themselves and their names are written in the Lamb's book of life. Lamb's book of life. Now, if nothing impure will ever enter, then all of us should be careful how we live. So we must be careful the process by which we live. And those of us who are also pastors and elders, Bible study leaders, deaconesses, choir leaders, and all that, we should be careful the way we are building our church. We should build it such that it will qualify to enter the city. We should build it such that it will qualify to enter the city. Now, to be able to build it such that it will qualify to enter the city, or if you want to be a Christian who is aiming at the city, to the ultimate goal, then the first thing that you ought to do is to have this goal in your mind. Have the ultimate goal always in your mind, whether in church or outside the church. Know that we are heading towards somewhere. We are heading towards somewhere. Have this ultimate goal. Desire that I want to be part of the bride. I want to be in this city. Have the ultimate goal in mind. Hebrews 12, verse 2. Hebrews 12, verse 2. Have the goal in mind. Let us fix our eyes on Jesus, the author and perfecter of our faith, who for the joy set before him endured the cross, scorning its shame, and sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. Now Jesus knew the end. For the joy that was ahead of him, that he kept his eyes on the end, the ultimate goal. And therefore, he endured the shame. He endured the suffering on the cross. So as Christians, we must also focus on the end. So that you don't fall into temptation. The temptation should come. So that you don't just give yourself up to temptation. You don't just take money that are not yours. You don't just live anyhow. Because you have your mind fixed on the end. Like Jesus. That strengthened him, and that will also strengthen us. Look at the Apostle Paul in 2 Timothy chapter 4, from verse 6 to 8. 2 Timothy 4, 6 to 8. Let's quickly run through this one. 2 Timothy 4, 6 to 8. For I am already being poured out like a drink offering, and the time has come for my departure. He is going to leave the planet Earth. He is saying that I'm about to die. I've done my best. I'm about to die. Let's look at verse 7. I have fought the good fight. I have finished the race. I have kept the faith. Verse 8. Let's read verse 8 together. Now there is in store for me the crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous, just will award to me on that day. And not only to me, but also to all who have long for his appearing. So he, the apostle Paul, was very strategic in the work that he was doing. Many times they will beat him, he's about to die, but he will put on strength and then continue to labor for the Lord, not knowing that he was aiming at something. He had the end in view. And then when he was about to depart, he said, I have finished the race. I've got into the terminal. I have really run my course. And I don't want you to miss out. The church should not miss out. We shouldn't just be churching. We must have the end in focus. The end in view. So that we will not slack in our race. Have the end in view. When I was growing up as a boy, I used to be a good runner. So I was selected to run for my school. It was a primary school. But that race was 400 meters. So we were going to go around once. I was not properly briefed. I didn't understand that it was 400. 
because all the training that we did, uh, we just went around once of the 400 meters, not knowing that that particular race was 400. But I thought it was 200. So I was aiming at the, the middle of the pack. So when they started, I just took the lead and everybody was shouting, Eric, Eric, Eric. Then when I got to the 200 line, I, I was slowing down. I thought that, and everybody was passing there. My teacher said, hey, move on, move on. I realized that <laughs> they have gone too far and there was no way I could catch up. So I fell down and the people came to lift me up. <laughs> they came to lift me. As though, see, I just fell down. But when I came back, I was confused because I thought that we were ending just behind the goalpost where I have been trained for, not knowing that this one was a 400 meters. There is an end of every race. And the apostle Paul said, I gauge the end. And today, praise God, I have finished. And I'm looking forward to the crown because I've done it well. I'm looking forward to a crown. Let's keep the end in focus. And we will not miss our providential way. Are we together? Fine. Those of us who are also building the church, we have to be careful the way we build it. 1 Corinthians chapter 3. From verse 12 says this, If any man builds on this foundation using gold, silver, costly stones, wood, hay, or straw, the Bible says that his work will be shown for what it is, because the day will bring it to light. It will be revealed with fire, and the fire will test the quality of each man's work. If what he builds survives, he will receive his reward. If it burn up, he will suffer loss. He himself will be saved, but only as one escaping through the flames. So all of us who are building the church, once we have made a leader of the church, we are digging the dickiness. It's not the joy of uh, being a dickiness or let me say that you want to pride yourself in the fact that now I'm an elder. No, or I'm a presiding elder. You should be able to build the church with quality. Because at the end of the day, what you build will be tested. You don't have to just build any church that will not lead us into the new city. So elders, let us build quality church. And that one will mean that we have to use quality materials. Quality materials. Let's read Colossians 1, 28, 29. We proclaim him admonishing and teaching everyone with all wisdom. So that we may present everyone perfect in Christ. This is the Apostle Paul. So those of us who are Bible study leaders, you are not just a Bible study leader. Please be praying for the people you are going to lead. Follow them up. And then you are not just leading Bible study, but at the end of the day, you want to present everyone mature and perfect to Christ. As a bride without spot nor wrinkle. That is what we want our churches to become. Are we together? Fine. Verse 29. To this end, I labor, I work hard, struggling with all his energy, God's energy, which so powerfully works in me. So the Apostle Paul wants to present his members as perfect bride to the bridegroom. And he says that this man is not easy. If you want to do that, it is not easy. You cannot lay on the foundation if you want to build such a church with straw, hay. But you need costly stones, gold. You need to build with silver, quality. Then he says that I work very hard to be able to get such a church. I'm praying that God will help us so that we shall also work very hard to be able to get such a church. We are building something that is fit for the gold. And there must be quality and quality assurance. Every good and purposeful life is lived with the end in view. There are some of us who have not actually imagined what you want to become in 20 years' time. 
I don't want people to say that I want to become a doctor in 20 years' time because you don't need 20 years to become a doctor. But what kind of a doctor, what kind of a human being do you want to become in 20 years' time? It is that kind of projection that will help you to live a certain kind of life. Certain people are so careless. They don't even want to learn when they are in school, no. And they are careless about their neatness. They are careless if words just come out of their mouth. They are careless the way they conduct themselves at their workplace. They are careless. They like to sleep because they don't have any end in view. So, I want to encourage you to just have some end in view. What kind of a human being want, do you want to become? When people hear your name, what should come into their mind? When you are dead, how do you want posterity to remember you? Put all these things on paper. So that is your goal. And then it will help you to walk leading to the goal. So, if you want to build a solid church, we must also have the goal in mind. And then we must build sites that we'll be able to obtain the goal. Hallelujah.